Welcome, everybody, to the Sonoma Spiel. My name is Tim with the Sonoma Valley Visitors Bureau. It's a lovely day in Sonoma, and you know I'm paid to say that, but it actually is a lovely day in Sonoma. The plaza was very full. Went to the farmer's market today. Uh, had a great time with that. And uh, the drive-in to work, is, it's always lovely. So I, I love it. We're recording this in April, and uh, we have a very special event coming up. So I'm so glad that our podcast guests this time are here to talk about it because it's going to be next week. But don't worry if you miss this one. There's always another one, and it's a really big and amazing thing. So this week, I have two very special guests. I know every week I say I have very special guests. This time I actually, actually mean it. They're back. It's the second time they've been here, but it's the seventh time they're putting on what we're going to talk about. They're from the Sonoma Valley Authors Festival. Ginny, how are you doing? Great. Great. David, how are you doing? It is great to be here. Good to see you guys. So thanks for coming back. Thanks for having us back. Well, I know. I mean, I mean, I thought last time, you're like, forget it. I'm out of here. I'm okay. never coming back. We're not going to do it. Um, you're with the Sonoma Valley Authors Festival, and that is an amazing event. It's this year to the Fairmont. Uh, mm -hmm. Sonoma Mission and Spa uh, here in April when we're recording this is typically always in, in the fall ish time, actually in the, in the springtime. Um, tell me about what is the Authors Festival and what could people expect and, and what is it? Go. Who's going to start? It really, I'll start. Um, it really is um, more of an Authors and Ideas Festival and it's very small. It's not like a giant book fair, mm. you know, with hundreds of attendees, hundreds and thousands of attendees or, you know, tons of authors. Mm. It is a very curated, intimate event. There are only about 350 people in the tent, in the main tent, and then we also have breakout sessions. We have, what, about 22 authors this year? Actually, about 25. And okay. um, it's kind of an immersion weekend. You know, you actually... Right. We start on Friday at um, noon with lunch, mm -hmm. and then uh, we all go into the main pavilion and we hear a different speaker every hour. Oh, wow. And then we do the same thing again all day Saturday and uh, Sunday from right after breakfast all the way through one o'clock. Okay, but so, you, this isn't though like going to like a lecture hall in college where they're like, droning on these are like no, amazing no, thinkers, they're fascinating right? authors yeah. but we as i said before it's authors and ideas um right. and authors have written a book and we have several authors that have brand new books coming okay. out even just this week and some even oh so some are premiering their premiering their books Absolutely. Yeah. launching their books whatever yeah. Yeah. Really. at least four okay. of them are yes. yeah that's fantastic good get didn't yeah. always work out that way but this time it did yeah okay and then we also have um People that have like TED Talks. Mm. So if they have uh, some fascinating discovery or message or something to share with the audience from science, technology, and medicine, mm. then we have them speak as well. Okay. And David will tell you a little bit more about um, some of those. Both the David, authors, that's and, your, that's your both the authors and the, and the <laughs> well, speakers. Well, I, I think what makes this different from uh, a couple of other festivals like this, like Jenny said, it's not like the San Francisco Book Festival where there could be four or five, ten thousand people or more, yeah. or Los Angeles Book Festival when there's seventy thousand or more. This is it's highly curated and we bring in authors to discuss their books. For example, this year we have uh, David Grand uh, discussing his book The Wager. Uh, Colm Tobin has a brand new book literally coming in next Monday called uh, Long Island. Wait, so the book is literally coming out the yes. week that he's yeah, going to Yeah, actually, we're getting it a week early. Oh, look at you. Yeah. That's really good. So uh, We just got Doris Kearns Goodwin, brand new book. So um, we, we bring in names that are very recognizable, and then yeah. we also bring in other authors that are uh, highly recommended, maybe their first book. Uh, Anita Gale Jones lives in Marin, very talented author. We're delighted she'll be with us. And then we bring in science, technology, and medicine. We have Aza Raskin, who's an expert in artificial intelligence. Mm. He's going to talk how they're using AI to actually communicate with animals, with mammals. It's really fascinating. Um, like, wait, 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 wait. They're talking to animals? Like, are they talking to dolphins and stuff? They're taking, Whales. they're recording the, the whales communication deciphering it and Using then able and then able to play it back to them uh, so they can communicate 
Uh, this is the plot of that Star Trek movie from the 80s where well, they talk to the whales and the whales were talking to the aliens or something. Well, it is fascinating. It's, this is very embryonic using this, but he, he, uh, he goes through several examples that have been t that they've in research, and it's fascinating. It's not talking to them in English, but right. it's taking their language of communication. AI is able to replicate it and then play it back and to see them. the patterns or something. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's fascinating. Okay, yeah. wait. Let's just jump to this. How many books are you guys reading every day? What's well, going it varies. on there? We read. I read a lot of half books, but I, <laughs> but so that's hard to answer. That <laughs> is, yeah. is the nightstand just <laughs> full of books and like yeah, craning yeah. over and yeah. And you know, the living room and the dining room the, and the office. What I think so yeah, yeah. important is besides being talented mm -hmm. as an author. Uh, he or she has to definitely be able to present and engage the audience mm. because uh, this is um, uh, a vacation with a purpose, but people have come to be entertained and they're right. paying to be entertained and to yeah. walk away. And the mm -hmm. atmosphere is such that the Fairmont Sonoma mission is that it's intimate enough that they're able to meet the people they're with, have lunch with the authors mm. and really form some connection. So I think that's part of the magic sauce that happens, we just Which makes kind of point. tee it up. To, to Jenny's point that it's an ideas festival mm -hmm. with books and, yeah, because I've, I've, uh, I've been to places, uh, there's wonderful authors who aren't very good presenters. Exactly. Yes. You know, and there's we, a reason. We go to a lot of lectures. In fact, we probably go to more <laughs> lectures than we do read books. Really? Because, you know, you can read book reviews and get mm -hmm. what everybody else thinks about the content right. of the book. But we really want speakers that are excellent speakers. Kind of dynamic and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's a long weekend. You know, it starts Friday at noon. It's over Sunday about 1 o'clock. Yeah. And maybe there's 24, 25 speakers. About okay. 14 of those will be in main tent presentations mm. and then the breakout session. So by the end of the weekend, you know, there's a lot of content people have been subjected to. And mm -hmm. what, I, what I like just on the website is seeing that the authors are talking to the attendees. They're absolutely. right there. They're oh, not yeah. up there on the stage far away. No, absolutely. Oh, they, and like on yeah. the breakout sessions and the lunches. And, and very and seldom, Tim, will they read from the book. They may mm. take one passage occasionally, but many times with authors, they'll do a book reading. Mm. And there's, to me, nothing really that exciting about that. You really want to know <laughs> what makes that person tick. Right. Uh, the type of person they are, and we try to provide that platform. Okay. Well, for instance, David Grant that wrote The Wager, it's been right. on the bestseller list for a year now. Mm -hmm. um, he did amazing research. He's also mm. the author of Killers of the Flower Moon. Yeah, and which, he did a lot of research on that. And that, that as well. movie that was made out of that was up for some Academy Awards. Yes, and yeah, very much. Book's yeah. quite quite an own book. What's but The Wager about? For instance, about? Oh. The Wager is a fascinating book. It takes place in the 1740s, mm -hmm. and it is the British Crown sent out four men of war mm -hmm. um, ships to basically go pirate a, a Spanish galleon full of treasure. To go find it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And to steal it. Right. They sent their pirates to go pirate the other Because I pirates. think this was recommended to somebody. Oh, I'm looking a, right now. Yeah. Yeah. I had a staffer recommend it to me because I, I drive to work. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful and, book. And she said, get the audio book. Yeah. Listen to it. It's phenomenal. It's, yeah. I, I, it's I downloaded it like three yeah. weeks ago. I still got to listen to the it. Detail okay. but one of the detail is amazing. One of yeah. the things that we learned from him is um, in his research, you know, th think about this. This is the 1700s. These men went from uh, England all the way to the west coast of South America mm -hmm. and back and they had these journals that mm. they had kept, mm. and they were in storage. And David Gran was able to go through these journals oh, yeah, to corroborate oh, wow. what really happened. Huh. Um, because there were conflicting stories. That's, that's, that's why the book is so good. The, the woman that recommended this book to me said, it's gripping. You're mm -hmm. going to be listening to it. It's like she, she couldn't put it down. Mm -hmm. So I was glad to see that. You're bringing well, we're not going to we're not going to give anything away with the end. But what is really interesting, as well as his detail, what it was like to be on these ships. Mm -hmm. Maybe there were four stories below deck. Who lived on where with the animals? Uh, it it was really 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 eye opening. Okay. And at this time, 1742, in this time period, over two million British sailors died from scurvy. Mm. And so they were constantly facing that type of adversity. But it's really insightful to that time and okay. period. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I've got I've got the thing open in front of me. Um, Doris Kearns Goodwin. You said her book is coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, an unfinished love story. Let me look at that one here. Her husband um, 
was a speech writer and political analyst, would, would you say? Mainly a speech writer. And, okay. he, and they both worked in the world of politics their whole lives. He mm. was writing a book but passed away before he finished it. Okay. So she basically finished his book by adding in what she her uh, things about her life as well. Okay, and, interesting. And how I can, we can just ima imagine how fascinating it was well, between she, the two. Of and them. she's a great historian. Her books, you know, yeah. we read them in college. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they really had their life together. I think they were married forty-four years. I'm not mm -hmm. sure, but uh, you know, he started writing for uh, Jack Kennedy, okay. then Lyndon Johnson. And they were really a fixture in Washington, D.C. Mm. And uh, the book just came out. Literally, we just got it delivered uh, like four days ago. And uh, it should be a wonderful read. It, it has that new book smell. Yeah. It's, it's a wonderful one here. You, you brought one in here. So this is this is fantastic. So, again, when people come to this, I'm assuming they can buy the books as well when yeah. they're at Reader's things. Books. Okay is um, our bookseller. There is um, both on site at the festival mm -hmm. and when we do Authors on the Plaza, mm -hmm. they also are the bookseller for well, all of those people. And well, now that you mentioned it, lady, let's mm -hmm. jump to Authors on the Plaza. What is that? What does that mean? Um, we decided, this is da was David's genius. Um, You're a genius, When we David. started doing this, <laughs> it, David really. said how, you know, if we can only have, you know, 350 people in the tent, how do we share this with mm -hmm. more people in the community um, than just those in the tent. Right. And there were two things, Students Day, which we'll talk about in a minute, which was we did the very first year all okay. the way through. Authors on the Plaza we added in our second year. Mm. And we take um, three of our top authors and have them go to the Plaza and uh, share their stories or their books. Um, for free. It's a free public event in the, yeah. the eight-acre plaza. You're in the horseshoe usually? Are you guys in the same spot? No, we're on the opposite on the back, side. Back yeah, side, back of the side. side. On the back yeah. side. Well, hey, City Hall is the same on all four sides. It doesn't matter. Exactly. So but you're in the back so, side of City Hall there. Okay. Yeah, and um, it is free. We ask people to register mm. on Eventbrite. The reason is we need to know if it's going to be 400 people or 1,400. Right. Partly just for cr crowd flow and volunteers, and the other part is um, we have to have it cleaned up afterwards. That's oh. our responsibility, and mm. we need to, when we hire the cleaning crew, need to know if it's 400 or 1,400. Doing those plaza events, after. you got to fill out the paperwork, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we <you> do. <laughs> but our three yeah. authors this year are David Grand. Oh, great. Amy Tan, okay. who's always a favorite, of course, yeah. and Colm Tubin, who okay. is the, the man that we were just talking about, the mm. Irish author and poet whose new book, Long Island, is coming out okay. just in the next few days. Oh, so this is fantastic. Mm -hmm. you've, you've had a couple of poets before. Didn't you have a... Well, um, we did. Mm -hmm. We had, obviously, Ada Lamone, Ada Lamone Sonoma Lamone, Grown. Right. We had Billy Collins, Billy Collins twice. Yeah. Uh, and then um, uh, Tracy K. Smith. Mm-hmm. Stacy. Oh, yeah. No, Tracy. Tracy. All me. poet laureates. <laughs> oh, great. Wow, yeah. really? Oh, yeah. 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 How, yeah. Is, how do you get these people to Sonoma? Like, these are big names. These are legit. I mean, I know Amy Tan's local, right? Yeah. Isn't she in Northern well, yeah, California? Sausalito, yeah. Yeah. But um, not all these people live around here. So are you, is it the croissants well, at the bakery? Like, how do you convince them to show up here? The, the, there's multiple ways, and perhaps the, the best way is when they're on book tour. And that happens to coincide with our festival. Okay. Um, we also uh, support with book purchases mm -hmm. when the book comes out. So mm -hmm. that's important to them. A lot of it is relationship, mm -hmm. being introduced to someone. Uh, so there's just a variety of, of, uh, of ways. We're going to have uh, Keel uh, Reed Amar, who's head of the Yale Law School, mm -hmm. Five of the Supreme Court justices were his students. That's somebody I met at another another uh, conference. Mm -hmm. Wonderful speaker, amazing uh, constitutional scholar. And again, that came through a personal contact. He said, "No, I'd love to do it." Mm -hmm. So it just depends. Tim. Mm -hmm. It's it's just amazing that you have so many yeah. different uh, types different of authors. Things. Yeah. Yes. Oh, and you know? also we are so excited to have Jeffrey Rosen back with us this year. He'll be speaking not only at the festival itself, but at Students Day. Okay. And he is not only a constitutional attorney, but he's an, a, an instructor, um, a columnist, an author. Okay. And among other things, he is the head of the National Constitution Center in Philadelphia which is like the Smithsonian for, for everything there is to know the about the Constitution. And you just tipped your hand on another event. 
you said, so we got authors on the plaza, mm-hmm. but you guys also do a thing for students. That's so, correct. So what is Students Day? What, what is that? Other well, than having a constitutional scholar Day, come. <laughs> uh, it's more than that. Well, just to right. finish that on, on Jeffrey Rosen, yeah. one of the first things he did when he took over the Constitution Center was to develop an app okay. about the National Constitution Center. Oh, that's great. And you can go on on the app online and look up any article, any um, amendment, mm-hmm. And then he also interviews people on each side of the fence regarding should this be changed. Oh, that'd be fun. So if if you are having a discussion with somebody about should something be changed, mm-hmm. and we all have Wait, many of those people conversations. People have strong opinions about the Constitution? <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> and um, you can go read about why it was developed, you know, when it was you know, incorporated uh-huh. and what the different uh, different arguments are to keep it or change it. Well, okay. I think okay. it's a very good balancing act because some people can say, well, how could you be for the Second Amendment, mm-hmm. the right to bear arms? Mm-hmm. So you, you bring a real point of view to that. So mm-hmm. it's interesting to hear the other side from a respected scholar talk about the right. Second Amendment. So it's been a very much... Uh, an educational balancing way to look and understand the Constitution. And probably, a, a, you know, in popular culture, discussions about the Constitution and the rights are very headline driven. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it sounds like this is a more, more substantive, little like this. It very issues much is. And, and, and yeah. the, both mm-hmm. men are so wonderful delivering it. It's very entertaining. Okay. Very entertaining. Okay. Very interesting. So, he'll, so that, that, I'm sorry, that man's name, name again, Jeffrey? Jeffrey. His name, Jeffrey Rosen. Rosen, okay. And he'll be here for students? Yes, yes. he will. Okay. And, he for will. The, uh, and for the festival. Okay. Actually, yeah. Jeffrey Rosen was a student of Akil Rita Mar at Yale. Oh, as well. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But meanwhile, back is Students' Day. We have right. eight different um, authors and speakers going over there uh, to Sonoma Valley High School this time. Go Dragons. You got to say and Go Dragons. I know. Okay. And um, the teachers, we work very closely with Janet Hansen at okay. the high school. It's just been wonderful all, ever since the beginning. And she helps work with the teachers on which students should hear which author Mm. or which speaker. One of the other people that's coming this year uh, to Students' Day is Craig Frazier, who is um, the man who is the illustrator who developed our logo. Oh. And he has a new book out called Drawn. I was going to show the logo for the podcast. Keep going. Absolutely amazing. And he's had everything from postage stamps to... Political posters. Okay. Um, no, New Yorker, Wall Street New Journal. I mean, it's a very distinctive. It has that kind of a great look to it. Yes. I like it. It's a nice logo. Yeah. yeah. And, so uh, he's yeah. And, the, and again, we have individuals in the in the main gymnasium for topics that are very broad, and mm. then the teachers select more targeted. Okay. Um, students for like Anita Gail Jones is going to speak on her writing, how she started writing. That'll mm. be a more targeted for kids who are interested in writing. Yes, and exactly. Creative process. And one of the all time favorites is Alex Filipenko. Okay. Who is an astrophysicist. He was voted the best speaker at all of UC Berkeley campus. Oh. nine years. Oh, yes. Wait, I think I've seen, I've seen yeah. YouTube videos of this guy. Yes. Oh, yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you he see does uh, great courses. And, yeah. Um, all kinds of things. He's okay. everywhere. But he looks and talks like Robin Williams. Oh, You've okay. never seen anyone so enthusiastic. That's about. good. And kind of connect with the kids and, and all yeah. the things. Yeah. Oh, are. they love him. It's always standing room only when he really? presents because he, he, is, he is so, so user friendly. So gifted. And it doesn't make a difference if they're eight years old or 80. Mm-hmm. He keeps everybody engaged. And I, I just love that. I mean, these kids go to the high school. They, they probably have no idea that you're bringing in these world class thinkers mm-hmm. and, and speakers. For free to them, right? Yeah. That oh, is yeah. wonderful. This is yeah. under re- really many great underwriters, but uh, Les and Judy Vadez, the family foundations, are major underwriters of this. It's yeah. I, And I bet you these kids, if you go back, I know we're seven years in, but uh, when we're on the 27th year, and uh, some of these kids are themselves graduates of Yale Law School, mm-hmm. yeah. and they're constitutional scholars. They're like, oh, right. I remember I was in the you know third period. Well, well, well we, we hope so. <laughs> we went, of went right <laughs> after that. Yeah. We hope so. I mean, that's that's great. Yeah. Um, and so Student Day, obviously, that's for students of Sonoma Valley. That's great, and, Sonoma High School. And this yeah. year, we're going back, and this has been Jenny's project. Actually, Lauren is too. Uh, I'll let her share it, but they're going back to three of the elementary schools. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Um, we... You know, the thing is, buying books is expensive. Mm. So it all comes from donations. 
and so it was going to you know take a little extra fundraising this year to come up with funds mm -hmm. to buy uh, books for the elementary school but what's fabulous is Jean Walker Harvey who is a Sonoma resident mm -hmm is a children's book author okay. and for each of her six books she's had a different illustrator illustrate the book but they're wonderful and they are um, aimed at children ages uh, three all the way through eight okay. okay and they're about famous people that had unusual upbringings mm. and ended up being incredibly successful okay. okay so we were able to purchase over a thousand books oh wow a variety of okay. um, we're, we chose uh, four different books mm -hmm. and Jean's going to actually go to th three of the elementary schools and do short presentations I guess oh, they have short attention spans <laughs> at that age <laughs> well they do <laughs> and do short presentations right. about her books okay and then um, for the other elementary schools that where Jean is not going to go in person they will also get books for their kids for their libraries okay so we're really looking forward you, to that. Okay, look, this, this is amazing because not only do you have these authors coming in for a big event at the Fairmont, and you have this dedication to bringing it to the young kids and then the whole community. What always bothers me, or piques my interest, is how did you guys get involved with this? Like, why, why this? Why Sonoma? How did this start? Who wants to answer that one? You answer that. Well, we, we've only been married 15 years. Okay. So... When we moved to Sonoma full time in 2000, um, well, we bought the place in, in 2011. 2011. Okay. We'd only been married three years. Okay. So we were kind of in both looking toward retirement and thought, what is going to be in our next chapter and what can we do together that is nothing like what either of us had done in mm. the past. Mm. So you guys are not authors yourselves? Oh, no. We you're not even in publishing. Can't even spell. You're not illustrating. <laughs> So she's not bad though. <laughs> I, I use Grammarly oh, very extensively. Good. Smart, yeah. Smart. Anyway, so we uh, were invited to go to another authors festival mm. in Sun Valley, and they're in there mm. to their thirty seventh year now. So we started going to that over ten mm. years ago, and really enjoyed it. Mm. And then because it was on our radar, we stumbled across a couple of other ones. There's one in Pebble Beach near mm. where some friends live down okay. there that we learned about when we visited them. David's mother, who lived until 98 and was mm. a voracious reader, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. lived in Rancho Mirage, and they started one down there oh, that we stumbled over. Okay. So we started attending these, and when it came time to what are we going to do in our retirement, right. selfishly, I said, you know, David has so much energy. He's going to be up at 5.30 every morning with his hair on fire. <laughs> she let's, knew how to keep you busy. Let's right. find something, yeah, to channel that energy in a positive direction. So the, the bulk of the direction came from him, and uh -huh. I'm kind of behind the scenes and, you know, do the... She's very much part of the scene. It, well, I appreciate that. But he's yes. more the front-facing well, person. I'm on mop-up. <laughs> were, you, were you, either of you, in like large project management, putting on big programs, conferences? Because this is a big undertaking. And you know, that's a, a good question, Tim. Yeah. I, no, I, I have not. I mean, I've organized uh, events with my former firm, but, you mm -hmm. know, for the partners or whatever, but it was small events, right? nothing like this. I don't think you have either, have you? Well, I work for IBM mm -hmm. for... 18 years and there was always all kinds of meetings of different sizes Got it. and I I kind of joke and say throughout my career there are times I was a chief and times when I was an Indian yeah you're doing a little and bit of those everything. skills yeah. have yeah. Served, served me well depending but on you, but you weren't like a meeting planner no like oh no or a conference person or no wow you no. just fit right into it and so let's go with it mm -hmm. well we've learned a lot <laughs> <laughs> yeah. see, the, see what? these gray hairs <laughs> Well, and I know, I mean, and you got through COVID, right? Because you yeah. started it before COVID. We did. We had a mm -hmm. virtual COVID. We yeah. pivoted, yeah. as they say. As we all did, yeah. Well, and we learned from that. Mm -hmm. You know, we had to, we were just a few weeks away from our festival in 2020. Mm. It was, you know, middle of March, and we were scheduled for the first week in May. Mm. Yes. Um so yes. we'd already paid all the authors. They already had their time set aside. Nobody was going anywhere. Right, right. So we ended up um, doing Zoom videos mm -hmm. on all of those, but we also recorded them as they were delivering them. Okay, okay. So they were available for viewing afterwards. And we just made it free. We didn't right. know what else to do. Right, You know, right. at the beginning time, of COVID, nobody crazy knew times, crazy what times. to do. 
and we were stunned. We had over 3,500 people sign up yeah. and over 11,500 views Great. of that little, you know, 25 whatever lectures. Huh. We said, you know, maybe going forward, this is another avenue to reach people. Yeah, yeah. So we have ever since then recorded. Oh, you did record them? Video recorded. Okay. All the oh, lectures. yeah. No, we did. We did. Right. And, we, and I have to add, we've been really blessed to have some great people. We have a wonderful group of sponsors. Mm -hmm. In the case of Authors on the Plaza, Chuck and uh, Kathy Williamson have been wonderful supporters. Uh, with the case of the virtual, uh, the McNeely's, Rosemary mm. and Kevin have okay. been fantastic. And, but we really have a broad-based group of people that support these projects. It's oh. very much a... A lot of people on the oars making it happen. Right, kind of, mm -hmm. kind of doing a lot there. Yeah, but the, so the virtual festival um, is being recorded again this year, videotaped. Okay. Takes us a couple of weeks to edit all the right. videos and get them all uploaded to these servers right. where thousands of people can view them. Right, and then they're available for a month. Oh, that's and great. that's because a lot of the authors don't want their data in the public domain forever. Because and also they'll be going to Tulsa and Chicago for their own book yeah. tours, right? So, yeah. And they yeah. may use parts of their lectures, right. you know, in other places. So it's only out there for a month. Mm -hmm. But it's anybody. Um, we also offer it for sale for a nominal price just to help us with the offset right. of the incredible the cost. cost. Uh, video production, that. aside from the, for those that watch us on YouTube, y you guys know we have 12 cameras going right now and a, and a producer. No, we have two little GoPros right here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it looks like it when you watch it on YouTube. But yeah. I've seen your videos and they're definitely professionally done and the sound yeah. is done professionally. They're, yeah. they're quite nice. Yeah. So that's, that's a good well, sign. Well, this year I'll mention we, we um, have asked uh, Cal California uh, media. Mm. Uh, public media to come in and they're going to do some recording. Well, I was thinking this is exactly the kind of thing they could put on the, yes. the public radio station or TV yeah. stations and, yeah. and do it. Even yeah. public radio if they, if they do the audio and it's mm -hmm. good. Northern it's California public media. For good yeah. job. Yes. Yeah. They're, no, they're, they're good. And so um, we're excited about that. It's a bit of an experiment, but we, we, we should have a very good product at the end of the no, day. I, I think yeah. it's a good, I mean, I think it's a good product yeah. already. So no, thank yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, either you can come to the festival okay. and sit in the seat. Right. You can, um, if you're a student at the high school or one of the elementary schools, you, you can get, get it that way, or Authors on the Plaza or the virtual. So we've ended up, um, we have a little impact um, statement here. Oh, yeah. Um, did you get, did, yeah, I did don't you know get that? I don't know. Here we go. It. Here we go. Um we actually, I'll hand it to you, yeah. over, the, over the six years that we've done this so far, we've had over 150 um, authors and speakers. Okay. Over 2,000 people have participated yeah. in, at the festival itself. We've had over 9,700 students mm. um, come in contact with the authors through the various schools. We've given away over 15,000 books written hmm. by the presenting offers, given them That's away right. to free to the kids. Wait, For can many, you read that number again. How many? 15,000 books. That's incredible. We yeah. always give away yeah. between three and 4,000, depending on the number of speakers, free books to the students that actually uh, that's wonderful. That hear the author speak. Yeah. So there's a connection there. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And then uh, Authors on the Plaza, over 3,000 people mm. have participated in that. And we also have some books that end up in storage, and we decided to pull those out and give those away <laughs> Just for release free. them over time. Very good. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so over 2,500 books have been given away to for free to individuals in the community. And as far as the virtual, mm -hmm. we've had over 6,500 individuals mm. have watched something and over 17,000 individual presentations have been viewed. This is wonderful. You guys, I, I mean, my little free library seems kind of sad compared to this, <laughs> yeah. but that's, uh, that is very impressive. Yeah. Well, we feel really fortunate, yeah. very fortunate. And what people don't understand, we've had some people say, oh, it's elitist, and, you know, how come it's not like the other book fairs that are free? Mm -hmm. What it is is the people that sit in the seats in the p pavilion mm -hmm. for the main festival, 
there is a, a significant donation that they right. make, and it's those donations that allow us to, to do, do all the programs this. at the school and the free program. And the, and yeah. get, I mean, yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're, books don't come out of thin air. Yeah. Right, you have well, to pay for them. And just the production cost to do it at the Fairmont, you know, if you go to any sort of theatrical promotion, it very seldom is it driven by ticket sales. It's right. always driven by either corporate sponsors, what we call sponsors, which are individuals, mm -hmm. or by grants and foundations. So right. it, that's what makes it happen. Well, yeah. it's, I mean, I, we were talking about public media. Uh, it is a worthwhile endeavor. There's a lot of quality stuff, but it's not making a lot of money commercial, so you need oh, to no. have people support it. Right. So in this case, if you want right. to support authors and, and ideas, mm -hmm. and especially what I love is going to the high school kids and, and the you know younger yeah. kids, yeah, it does have to get supported, right? Right. Somehow. Yeah. So, so rather than so rather than be annoyed by the people sitting in the tent, <laughs> thank the people sitting. We're in the happy tent they're here for because you know what they go to the other businesses generosity. and they're and they're yes. having a good time in Sonoma Valley. Yes. Yes. And and they're not all sleeping on your couch, right? Some of them no, are in no, the hotels. No, no. Okay, in their good. car. <laughs> some in their car. <laughs> yeah. Some out there. Um, before we move on to anything else in the podcast. Um, what is the website if people want more information about the Authors Festival? It's www.svauthorsfest.org. -E okay. Just like Sonoma Valley Authors and then Festival, Fest. but it's FEST.org. S-V, authorsfest.org. Yeah. Yes. And people can get, they can still purchase their sponsorships yes. there. Okay. Yes. All the information right. is there, right including there. the program and the schedule. And I do want to stress, I'm hoping, I mean, 7th Annual, it should go to 8th and 9th and 10th, so you can find more information mm -hmm. and probably sign up. And I know you guys are active on the social media and the different promotions. Mm -hmm. so Absolutely. Don't just go there for this one. Go there to get all the, all the different information. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And I think I told you uh, two years ago, I sat down at the bakery. I was drinking my coffee, and... Um, I was sitting there, I'm like, oh, that woman looks a lot like Isabel Allende. Like, that is weird. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, that is Isabel Allende. <laughs> She's going to be a guest. She's going to oh, really? be there this year. She's yeah. our guest, yeah. And, and Roger, her husband. Oh, it's great mm -hmm. that, you know, seeing seeing the authors, I mean, you say authors on the plaza. I see them walking around the yeah. plaza yes. when they when they yeah. come here. Well, so. Jeffrey Brown will, will be with us again for probably the okay. fifth time. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, of course, Alex Filipinko teaches at Berkeley. He's been with us four or five times, right. especially for the students, but also for the adults. And mm -hmm. um, so we're fortunate. Doris is coming back. Doris Kearns Goodwin oh, yeah, for great. the third time. You got her, yeah, because I know she... Mm -hmm. Third time she'll be back. Day. And she lives back east? Is she, is she, she lives oh, yeah. in Boston from Concord oh, after yeah. her husband died. Oh, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, she, she was, I mean... For a lot of people who first saw the Ken Burns documentary on baseball, that's where she was kind yes. of the, the big yes. thing. And then uh, Team at Rivals, which yes. is yes. the Lincoln thing. And, mm -hmm. you know, she's definitely probably the most, in my mind, well-known historian uh, in, like, American yeah, culture. Yeah, incredibly uh, yeah. friendly with the audience. Just a real okay. gift. Really an unusual lady. Huh. Mm -hmm. Well, again, if any of these people oh, have spare time, we have plenty of volunteer hours at the visitor center. <laughs> yeah. And can you imagine Doris Kearns Goodwin, like, handing you a visitor guide and then, like, well, during the time of McKinley. Uh. <laughs> you know, Doris would do it if she yeah. had the time. Trust me. Really? That Not would be, all. That all would be money. so funny. And they're, they're doing that. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, you guys, you're going to answer some questions okay. from our visitors. You know that, right? Okay. Yes. Let, me, let me get these out. Hold on. Because we, this is a thing we do. Mm -hmm. Right, and you know okay. we have we have two visitor centers, and visitors come and ask us questions, and they call and they text, and right now you're going to help me. Okay, and this is a segment Shoot. we call we, we get, get, get questions. questions. Ready? Yeah. This is an agricultural one. <laughs> I noticed that the cover crops are mowed in every other row in the grapevines. Why is that? Why do they leave one row and then mow one row? You don't have to know all the answers. But if you look, there's a cover crop mm -hmm. in the vineyards. Mm -hmm. I know. I know. <laughs> and someone asked us, uh, it grows. Then they mow every other row. And they're like, why is that? And I'm like, I don't know why that is. And you're right. As I was driving home, I noticed that. And so, so what's your second question? <laughs> 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 I'm going to get 
<laughs> that was a good one. Yeah. Uh, so the answer to this one, just real quick, is that I guess um, you grow a cover crop, but it gets really tall and it's hard to pass through. Mm -hmm. So they mow it down a little bit so they can still walk in the vines. And then also um, you want to eventually cut your cover crop because it starts absorbing too much water that's competing with the grapevines. So oh. the soil oh, okay. holds the water. They mow it down. If they mow half of it, you still get the advantage of some of the nitrogen fixing and stuff like that. Maybe when you bring a famous agronomist to the 8th Annual Authors Festival, you'll be ready for it. <laughs> the, this one is also related to the outside. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. I was asleep last night and heard a low buzzing sound in the early morning hours. Was that a helicopter or an airplane or just the persistent intrusive thoughts reminding me of my mortality? It, it was the pacemaker about to go off in your chest. <laughs> <laughs> Three in the morning. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, it was, it was probably cold, and those were the fans that go on in the vineyards at night. I've you heard that sound before. got it, yeah. Yes. You got it. So we get this one a lot mm -hmm. in the springtime um, to keep frost at bay. They have these enormous fans. They People do think they're wind generators or wind turbines, but they're not. They're mm -hmm. fans. You turn them on, and they blow the air, and mm -hmm. it keeps the cold air from settling on the buds. Exactly. And and But you can always tell. And you guys moved here a couple, you know, you said when you moved here, what, 15 years ago? Mm -hmm. I bet you for the first year, you had your windows open, mm -hmm. and you heard, mm -hmm. yeah. And it wasn't a pacemaker. No. <laughs> Could be. But it was not. protecting the Pinot Noir. <laughs> not your not your aortic artery or something. Okay, yeah. very good. Um, speaking of mortality, do any wineries offer the chance to dedicate a vine in memory of someone? Hmm. I'm not sure about that. Yeah. We don't know of any. I know yeah. of no one that's done that. Yeah. And I know people that have died because of the vine, <laughs> but not dedicated to it. There's plenty of winemakers who are like, ah, why did I do this job? <laughs> um, it turns out, because this was a weird one. Mm -hmm. And again, you guys, because this is your second time, we asked you hard questions. Um, it turns out there is one winery we found, not in Sonoma Valley, but Old Vine, Old Vine Winery has an Adopt-A-Vine program. Huh. And they're over in the Russian River Valley, which you should go to after Sonoma Valley. So first go to the Sonoma Valley Authors Festival. But uh, for $100, they can have a personalized custom plant tag with your name, a friend or loved one's name, a pet, or in memoriam to mark your contribution. Huh. And you will receive a bottle of the first vintage. So a smart way to uh, sponsor a vine. Mm -hmm. And... Um, at first, we were like, wait, do you want to be buried underneath the vines? Like, what are you talking about? But no, it was just like a, a, a memory. Yeah. A memory, right. Yeah. So that's smart. I kind of like that. Sure. Yeah. You know, why not? So that's uh, maybe someone else will start that in Sonoma Valley. But mm -hmm. uh, we did find that one. <laughs> uh, next question. Are you ready? Yep. Mm -hmm. I would like to buy a book in Sonoma. Where should I go? Reader's, Reader's Books. <laughs> You guys There's, are like doing your own ad there. Yeah. <laughs> there is no question. Yeah. What, tell me about Reader's Books. Where is that? Oh, it's wonderful. It's been there for... 1993? Yeah. Okay. Forever. Okay. And the staff is lovely. They know everything there is to know about every book. Yeah. So if you go in and describe what you're looking for, the person that you would like to buy a book for as a gift, right. they will come up with That's the true. perfect suggestion. They, they do a good job. At that. Yeah, they're great. And they do, not to say it's the same as an author's festival, they do plenty of small readings with authors yes, coming they do. Down. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a cute little, like, kind of a back patio. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I love it when you walk in there and there's an author because it is a small mm -hmm. bookstore. Mm -hmm. They open the back door. Sometimes the author is basically in the garden mm -hmm. talking into the building <laughs> where <laughs> people are sitting. And uh, this is so Sonoma, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's actually a big name author. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's a really That's good great. bookstore. I, li I like that bookstore. Yeah, and Andy Weinberger, the owner, has uh, written a series of mystery novels. Oh, really? Right. Yes. And Wish I think he's put up to his fourth or fifth. Fourth or fifth, yeah. By now. Are they set like in a bookstore? Los in, Angeles. In, in Los, Los Angeles. Angeles. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they're not like a, somebody solving crimes, but they're also the bookstore like employee kind no, of thing. No, it's about a... Yeah, um, it's a detective. It's about yeah, solving really? crimes in Los Angeles. I'm gonna mm -hmm. have, okay, I, I better get him on this podcast yes, to talk about you them. Should. You should. I'll get him there. You how, let me ask, how do you guys find all these books? Like what's... Like, why, why are you like, this This one's great? Well, you know, it, again, we read the book reviews. We're on a couple of platforms that literally publishes every book broken down by category that's published. Um, 
So it, there's a lot of ways to find find the books. I mean, almost too much to process. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you have people helping you. It's not just the two of you. Well, we work with well, Elaine Petrocelli at Book Passage in Corner okay. Madero. She oh, yeah. was with us from the beginning. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, way before we knew much about the Sonoma Valley, we mm -hmm. just moved here. And uh, she's been in business 45 years. Huh? and is a real legend in the business and uh, just a wonderful, wonderful uh, partner with us well, okay. as okay. far as introducing and getting mm -hmm. authors. Kind of and also there's a, um, a man that worked at City Arts and Lectures in mm. San Francisco for m many years and then went out on his own as an agent. Mm. And he has some of the top authors, he represents some of the top oh, okay. authors. And we have regular communication with him, and he'll Got say, so-and-so has a new book coming out next so spring. So he can kind of keep an eye out for what's... Yes. And know that they'd be a good fit for this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there are a lot of people a lot smarter than us out there <laughs> giving us But you still advice. have a stack of books. <laughs> oh, we yeah. do. Oh, yeah. 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 That's what... I've, I have a neighbor. Uh, she's a retired Spanish teacher and principal. And I said, I have those little free libraries. She just brings over the best books mm -hmm. and by, by the bag full. Mm -hmm. And they're wonderful. And I just love having a neighbor like that that's like, yeah. you know, one giving me free books. Well, speaking yeah. of Spanish, we have yeah. Louis, uh, Luis Miranda, oh. who is Lynn Manuel's father. Oh, Lynn Manuel, yeah. the Hamilton Ham guy? Yes. Hamilton, okay. yes. And he's had a very interesting life in New York huh. uh, in politics, in community activism. And he has a book out called Relentless, and okay. so he's going to be speaking with us. We're very we're delighted oh, to have him. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Good and he's speaking to the kids as well as the mm -hmm. grown -ups. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Okay, so and there was a local one. Sonoma connection to be able to procure him. Okay. So. Was it that we have to put on a production of Hamilton in the plaza? I um. hope not. We're not doing that. <laughs> By the way, we're going to add yeah, that the last. <laughs> it's, it, it's the uh, Visitor's Bureau. No way, yeah. man. Yeah, no way. I, uh, yeah. Okay, you know what? Uh, that does remind me. Okay, an ad. Okay. The Broadway in Sonoma is happening, Transcendence Yay. Theater. They're doing their performances north of the plaza. Yes. I know. Tickets Field are now on sale. Yeah, the Field of Dreams, June. Uh, they're doing summertime, July. Don't stop us now. August is uh, Dancing in the Street, and September is the Gala, mm -hmm. a sentimental journey. What's cool, I was just talking to Brad from there, Brad Swarovski. Um, they're encouraging people to come here, spend time around the plaza before. Right. Go to the show or afterwards. Mm -hmm. So go to uh, Reader's Books and, yeah. and check Absolutely. out the books there. And then mm -hmm. go to the show, right? And then right. come back and have some cocktails at, at Steiner's, as you do. Mm -hmm. Yes. As, as all the finest stuff. Yeah. So, guys, this has been wonderful. You're, you're the easiest interviewers. That's <laughs> you're why the, you're, <laughs> you're the easiest host. Get out yeah. of here. That's yeah. why you're the very special <laughs> guest. Um, so I don't forget, the website one more time is? svauthorsfest.org. Okay, svauthorsfest.org. You can get some tickets still available, yes, sponsorships sure. limited uh, still there. But if not, even if you're listening to this later, look for next year's or look for the stuff that's online. Yeah, look for the mm -hmm. virtual or right. come to the Sonoma Plaza Saturday from 11 to 2 for the free event. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And if you are a high school kid, one, glad you're listening to my podcast. Thanks, man. I'll try to drop some slang into this. But also go to it when your teacher says to go to the uh, – uh, kids event, uh, children's event, make sure you show up uh, because maybe one day you'll be one of those authors at the Authors Festival. So, mm -hmm. uh, David, Jenny, thank you so much for being on. Thank, thank you, Tim. Always a pleasure to have pleasure. you here. Pleasure. Uh, after you're done at the Authors Festival, remember, go to our website, SonomaValley.com. Deals, special offers, events. We've even got a new Cinema Plaza tasting pass. What? Is that a commercial? It is. We have the new Cinema Plaza tasting pass. $69 gets you into three different tastings around the plaza. Give me one of those. Oh, look at that. Yeah, you get yeah, one right yeah, there. Yeah. I've already sold one. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll see you next week.